the Indian model of secularism. Sometimes it is said that Indian secularism is an imitation of Western secularism. For a start, it arose in the context of deep religious diversity that predated the advent of Western modern ideas and nationalism. There was already a culture of inter-religious tolerance in India. Besides, tolerance allows you to put up with people whom you find deeply repugnant. Both India and France are secular, but in India there is no prohibition on wearing or displaying such religious markers in public institutions. Markers like turbans and veils in educational institutions. It also asserts ideas of inter-community equality to replace the notion of hierarchy. It resulted in equal focus on intra-religious and inter-religious domination. The advent of Western modernity brought to the fore hitherto neglected and marginalized notions of equality in Indian thought. It sharpened these ideas and helped us to focus on equality within the community. Indian secularism equally opposed the oppression of Dalits and women within Hinduism, the discrimination against women within Indian Islam or Christianity, and the possible threats that a majority community might pose to the rights of the minority religious communities. This is its uh, uh, first important difference from mainstream Western secularism. Indian secularism deals not only with religious freedom of individuals but also with religious freedom of minority communities. Thus the Indian constitution bans untouchability. The secular character of the Indian state is established by virtue of the fact that it is neither theocratic nor has it established any one or multiple religions. Thus, in, thus the Indian constitution grants all religious minorities the right to establish and maintain their own educational institutions which may receive assistance from the state. The Indian state may engage with religion negatively to oppose religious tyranny. This is reflected in such actions as the ban on untouchability. It may also choose a positive mode of engagement. Constitutional grants or grants all religious minorities the right to establish and maintain their own educational institutions which may receive assistance from the state. I'm reading it uh, uh, twice to point out the engagement of Indian state negatively and positively. All these complex strategies can be adopted by the state to promote the values of peace, freedom and equality. Uh, it should be clear by now why the complexity of Indian secularism cannot be captured by the phrase equal respect for all religions. Indian secularism allows for principled uh, state intervention in all religions. For example, Religiously sanctioned caste hierarchies are not acceptable within Indian secularism. The secular state does not have to treat every aspect of every religion with equal respect. It allows equal disrespect for some aspects of organized religions. Read a short story name in Forsaking Paradise 
Stories from Ladakh by Abdul Ghani Sheikh, published by Katha. Okay, so while we are reading these different kinds of highlighted text, a narrative must be forming in our head. The point of reading these NCRDs is to form a narrative uh, in a story-like manner. So at the end of the day, when you are attempting questions, you can uh, uh, gather from the story, from the narrative, from the keywords. That's the whole point of this uh, exercise of reading NCRTs. So now let's move on to criticism of uh, Indian secularism, anti-religious. First, it is often argued that uh, secularism is anti-religious. Similarly, it has been argued by some that secularism threatens religious identity. However, as we noted earlier, secularism promotes religious freedom and equality. Western import. A second criticism is that secularism is linked to Christianity, that it is Western and therefore unsuited to Indian conditions. Have you heard a European complain that, we, uh, that because Jiro was invented in India, they will not work with it? Okay, in the West, it was the church-state separation which was central and in countries such as India, the ideas of peaceful coexistence of different religious communities has been important. Minoritism a third accusation against secularism is the charge of minoritism. It is true that Indian secularism advocates minority rights. So the question uh, is, is this justified? They have given a whole story. The most fundamental interest of minorities must not be harmed and must be protected by constitutional law. I mean, you can read the story, uh, but this will become clear in this section. So the lesson is that minority rights need not be, not should be viewed as special privilege, uh, privileges. Okay. So we need to remember that uh, the Indian concept of secularism is positive, while the Western concept is negative. And... Uh, Interventionist, a fourth criticism claims that uh, secularism is coercive and uh, that it interferes excessively with the religious freedom of communities, but it does not follow that it is excessively interventionist. Indian secularism follows the concept of principled distance. Remember this principled distance, which also allows for non interference. Besides, interference need not automatically mean coercive intervention. So, uh, it is of course true that Indian secularism permits a state-supported religious reform, but this should not be equated with a change imposed from above with coercive intervention. Okay. And... Uh, uh, boat bank politics fifth there is the argument that secularism encourages the politics of boat banks as an empirical claim this is not entirely false however we need to put this issue in perspective first in a democracy politicians are bound to seek votes this is part of their job and that is what democratic politics is largely about in short, there is nothing wrong with both bank politics as such, but only with a form of both bank politics that generates injustice. The mere fact that uh, secular parties utilize uh, both banks uh, is not troublesome. All parties do so in relation to some social group. 
impossible project a final cynical criticism might be this secularism cannot work because it tries to do too much to find a solution to an intractable problem what is this problem people with deep religious differences will never live together in peace now uh, this is an empirically false claim the history of indian civilization shows that this kind of living together uh, is realizable it was realized elsewhere too the ottoman empire is an example okay so there is another way of responding to this criticism far from pursuing an impossible objective indian secularism mirrors the future of the world okay i think this is the end of this chapter secularism okay read out the the list of gadgeted holidays in india does it uphold the case of secularism in india give your arguments as you can see from all kinds of faith we have a date holidays okay so that's it for this chapter secularism